Vitamin C in a Pandemic, Heuristics for Survival, Part 1 by Steve Hickey. This is part one of a two-part video. Part one is what I would do. And part two gives some background on why I would do it. This isn't individual advice. There's a lot of crazy advice out there and much of it comes from the so-called authorities. I never give advice to others, but expect that intelligent people can review the data and come to their own conclusions. That is, people should make their own rational decisions and take advice from their hopefully knowledgeable physicians. I'm a biophysicist, not a physician. The approach here is take the approach taken here is heuristic. That is going from the problem to the solution. It's normally described as rule of thumb. But Steve McConnell gives a, a, a nicer, more interesting description. A heuristic is an algorithm in a clown suit. It is less predictable. It's more fun. And it comes without a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what would I do? I'd take dynamic flowing intakes of vitamin C as ascorbic acid and liposomal C. And what would I expect? I'd expect to remain in good health. Dynamic flow vitamin C is the single most powerful antiviral agent available. That's the heuristic. Here, it isn't vitamin C that is a powerful antiviral. It's dynamic flow vitamin C that's the, the antiviral. You need to get this right. If you don't get it right, it's not going to work. It isn't my heuristic. It comes from a whole host of physicians and scientists who've been saying this for about 100 years. It's a very long time. There are some very eminent people here and they've been ignored. Why? form of vitamin C I would use is low-cost ascorbic acid and I'd avoid if possible expensive so-called special forms as really they're just a means of getting excess profits. I'd not use sodium ascorbate or a vitamin C salt unless I had a bad stomach. If I could afford it and it was available I'd take additional liposomal vitamin C. The problem is the quality of the liposomal vitamin C. There are a number of liposomal vitamin C scams um, with vendors selling products which don't even contain liposomes. Liposomes are difficult to manufacture successfully and you need to use due diligence. Everybody needs to use due diligence in all of this. Synergistic stuff. One of the first things people ask me when I say very large doses, massive doses of vitamin C, is what should they take with it? Well, very little really. Um, there are some substances that might help somewhat, and one of them is alpha lipoic acid, 200 milligrams a day for prevention, and a gram or so a day if you're sick. Selenium, 200 micrograms a day is standard, and that you use that, might use that for prevention. Um, if I were sick, I would be quite ha I would quite happy taking these very high doses for a period of about a month. Notice those doses are in micrograms, not milligrams. Vitamin D3, it's fairly self-evident. Zinc, 25 milligrams a day. But I wouldn't expect much benefit out of these things. It all depends on the amount of vitamin C you take and how you take it. The diet. There is one overriding aspect of the diet and that is it must be low carb. Uh, no sugars, no starches, no carbs. Because carbohydrates interfere with absorption of vitamin C. Um, you may take a lot of vitamin C but it won't get into your system. It will just have a laxative effect. If you don't, if you don't take a low carb diet, this probably isn't going to work. 
other nutrients aren't as important. We've covered that. I'd make sure I wasn't deficient, but I'd otherwise basically ignore them. Now here I'm assuming a full-blown viral emergency, either the current one or a future one. And I wouldn't expect a minor dose of a vitamin or nutrient to stop an acute infection. Massive doses of vitamin C are different, and I take them in preference to other treatments such as drugs. Prevention. To prevent infection, I take about 12 grams of ascorbic acid in divided doses. So, for example, I might take 3 grams four times a day. You know, a dose with each meal. The issue is vitamin C is a laxative. We've already described this briefly, but it has something called a bowel tolerance. So a bowel tolerance of vitamin C is the limit of, of how much you can accept of a large oral dose. Overdo it and you're going to get loose stools. This is the main side effect of high doses. There are other mind restrictions on um, the use of very high doses of vitamin C, such as you need medical advice if you have kidney disease or any other issues. When approaching bowel tolerance, bloating and gas provide warning signs. Bowel tolerance increases when you're sick. So when a person is sick, the amount of vitamin C that they can tolerate without a laxative effect goes up. And when I say it goes up, I mean it goes up by a, a hundred times or even a thousand times. Um, that's an interesting observation. Prevention. Okay, I find myself at high risk. If, I'd, if I was at high risk, I'd increase my intake. I'd take smaller doses more frequently. So, for example, I might take a gram an hour or similar up to a close to bowel tolerance. Alternatively, I'd take about 12 grams of a good quality liposomal vitamin C, also in divided doses. That means spread over the day. So perhaps a gram every two hours or so. What would I expect from this, all these efforts of prevention? Well, I'd expect to avoid 80 to 90% of viral infections, full stop. Okay, now I've got, and it feel as if I've got an infection coming on. Um, for example, I'm running a temperature. So the first thing is it's important to act quickly because the viral load is building up. And if you don't squash it quickly, you're going to have a much bigger problem. I'd switch to taking five grams of ascorbic acid every half an hour. I'll repeat that, five grams of ascorbic acid every half an hour. That's a lot. I tail off to avoid the bowel tolerance limit, which may be high now, much higher than before. If available, I would immediately take about 10 grams of liposomal vitamin C in a single dose, and then might take one gram of liposomal vitamin C every hour. I'd stay near bowel tolerance for the next 24 hours, close to the maximum I could, I could tolerate. So I've had the first hint of an infection. Uh, what's my expectation? Well, of course, it depends on how well and early I caught the initial symptoms. A delay would increase the probability of getting the, the sickness. Also, symptoms are subjective and it's very easy to think you've cured an illness you didn't have in the first place. However, I'd expect a 50-50 chance of avoiding the infection. Um, by catching the illness early enough. Okay, nothing's worked. I've got the infection. Um, I'm not very well. What am I going to do? I'm going to take five grams of ascorbic acid every half an hour until close to bowel tolerance, as before, except my bowel tolerance might now be absolutely enormous. If the dose was well tolerated, I'd, I'd increase the dose. I would get close to bowel tolerance again. 
hopefully without hitting the laxative effect. Approaching bowel tolerance, I'd greatly lower the dose to say four grams now, then three grams, but I'd stay near bowel tolerance. I'd use liposomal vitamin C as the top up, for example, a gram every hour. Why a top up? Because the bowel tolerance is now enormous. Um, I might be taking 100 grams of vitamin C a day or so. Um, I'm getting a lot of vitamin C in my system because my body is crying out for it. I will load up on cheap ascorbic acid and then when I'm close to bowel tolerance, I can load up again on liposomes. What's my expectation of having the infection? Well, I'd expect to feel sick, but I'd be able to control the symptoms to an absolute minimum. I'd expect to live, and I would not expect to get pneumonia or any other complications. I would be in control. This is rational decision-making. Basically, there's an upside and a downside. The upside is it might give me peace of mind. I'll take that. Might stop me being sick. Ditto, sounds good. Might save my life. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. Downside. Might not work. Okay. Might get loose stools. Fair enough. Might get criticised by a sceptic. Well, um, they can award them. They can get a Darwin Award. This is a no-brainer. You try something safe that might work or sit about waiting to get sick and possibly die. I know which I'm doing. Thank you very much.